Yo, what's up, YouTube? This is Pure Kicks back again with another video. And for those who have not read the title just yet, today your boys are taking a look at our top five moments of the documentary of the decade, The Last Dance. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Almost, this documentary is mad, yeah? Mm. High recommendation from your boys over here at Pure Kicks. Thanks. If you haven't seen it, I don't know what you're playing at. It's over at Netflix, yeah? Basketball gold. Thanks. Please make sure you go and see that documentary. Regardless, we're about to enter some spoiler territory. It's a little you bit. have to go and see that documentary before you watch this video, okay? Now, the reality is, there are untold moments in this documentary. There are silly amounts, well over a thousand, probably even more. But we got, we got all the time to make a video that long. So we had to combine them down to our top five. So that's enough talking. Let's get straight into it. Before we get into our top five, we have one honorable mention. And be. this is arguably the greatest character in all of basketball. Is in there? Dennis Rodman, yeah? Mm. In episode three, I believe, we were introduced to this, this amazing character. And the most notable moment yeah, that this guy displayed in this doc was when this brother skipped <laughs> an NBA Finals practice session. Yeah. After these men just won a game against the Utah Jazz to go and wrestle. WWF it was, right? WrestleMania? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, he, he went to join Hulk Hogan and NWO, they called himself. So he can bat a man with steel chairs. I don't, Legend, know how to I don't know how many coaches you get to tell that to and not have to run suicides for the rest of the season. I don't know. Jackson, you know what I'm saying? For me to tell my coach, my guy, I was just wrestling something. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, what a legend, man. Yeah, we have to put that one in there for sure. Yeah, it has to be in there, 100%. Getting into the list at number five. Now, before I even say, it's tough to even rank these. I'm not going to lie. Like I said, there's a lot of moments that we had to get five of them. So, Loki, they can interchange. But this one comes in from episode eight, the Space Jam workouts. Bro, you tell me, you tell me exactly how you use a film with the Looney Tunes to get back in shape to return to the NBA for a championship run. That sentence so, alone is baffling to me. So the, the, the producers of the Space Jam movie built him a gym yes. to work out in. Yeah. This guy got up early, worked out before they jumped on set. Obviously. Did a whole day of recording wow. after the maddest workout with his, with his trainer. And then after the shooting, he would then call NBA stars to come scrimmage with him. Come, come, all the best of them, not just his team. Because I think this is it's like off season, I believe. So just let me get a quick all-star game with you, man. Bro, um, everyone you, was he on said, you man come. Everyone was on you, man. you man come. Um, and even Reggie Miller said it himself. He was back. He was like, how's this dude giving everyone buckets at this scrimmage when he's been working all day and all I've been doing is chilling? I was with the fam a couple 20 minutes ago. He offered to drive up and he's been shooting with the gym around. Remember they had the, the, the machines surrounding the court. So when he finished yeah. getting his shots up, go get the weights in. Nah. Yeah, it's just greatness. That's and, why. And, it has and to be in there. What, what I loved the most was that he was using it not just as an opportunity to get better, yes. but he was also scouting the players to see what competition he's got to come up with the next uh, season. Yeah, oh. If I was one of the players, I'd be fuming that I took the invite, knowing that now, I'd be fuming. So this whole time I thought, yeah, quick scrimmage, no, I'm the scouting report. It has to be in there. Put it in there, man. Yeah. it has to be in there. 100%. Coming in at number four, this was an amazing moment of episode seven. Yeah. The Bradford Smith. Okay, if you don't know who that guy is, uh, he was a rookie, so he had a very short career, three-year career, and uh, his first game against MJ, he drops 37 points, okay? MJ then goes and tells everyone that after the game, he went up to MJ and said, nice game, Michael, nice game, after, you know, giving him that L, okay? The next game, Chicago Bulls and Michael Jordan give that work. Yeah, work. 
And then it turns out that my Michael Jordan made up the whole story, bro. <laughs> <laughs> joking. This guy's psyche was different. No, he's a different gas man. Psyche. He's a gas man. He's a gas man. He said, the way, the only way for me to get into a mindset to annihilate him and his team is for something to have really upset me. But because nothing did, I had to make one up. So when reporters told me how you did, it's because, yeah, you said nice game, I'm not having that. I took it personally. You made it personal. But Mike, you made it personal to yourself. You made it personal, you made it personal Mike. He didn't want no beef, but you, you created the beef. Imagine, imagine. Oh, wow. Ah, uh, MJ, <laughs> you're different, bro. It's low key toxic. You start believing your own lies, that's toxic. Yeah, low key. Toxic. But it worked. It, it definitely <laughs> worked, but it's toxic. Toxic. Madness. Next up, coming in at number three, is from episode five, and you guys can probably guess it by my background. It had to be in this list. I mean, we're pure kicks. This is kind of what we do. When MJ decided, or was sure he was going to retire for, for good, but he thought his last game at Madison Square Garden was here, he thought, I'm going to wear the pair of shoes I wore the first time I was MSG, he wore the Air Jordan 1s and did a madness. Madness. He did. The craziest thing as well yep. is that by halftime, the shoe was hurting his feet so much that his socks were soaked in blood. That's, that's, that's tough. It's kind of gory still, but they didn't stop him. But he was wearing 1s. We love 1s over in this channel. Who doesn't love 1s? Yeah. So it had to be in his list for sure. I mean, again, it goes back to just him. He wanted that moment. He must have been so sure that he was retiring. He must have been so sure. Because it's like, I want this moment to be perfect. I'm going to get everyone buckets in the first pair of shoes I wore at MSG. I'm going to go out like a boss wearing exactly what I wore. Even though his feet were bleeding, everyone can hold these buckets. The game's only 45 minutes or however long. 40 minutes, 48 minutes, different around the world. Get these buckets, bro. Hold these buckets. Coming up at number two is from episode eight, where MJ finally decided to come back to the league. Him and his agent had sat down and figured out a whole bunch of different ways that they can kind of announce this to the world that yes, I'm coming back to the league. MJ basically just said, "Shrap all that. That's that's not something I do. I wouldn't really say it like that." So they just it. just said, "Okay, you do it then." And MJ, in MJ fashion, hit two words and simply said to the world, "I'm back." It's too lit. It's too lit, fam. By any any stretch of anyone's imagination, MJ is the biggest icon in the world right now, announcing him coming back to the NBA after missing for two years to play baseball. And you think it's okay to tell the world, I'm back, and that's it. Where's the context? And I don't think two words have ever been as powerful as oh. those two words. Yeah, 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 nah, it's, it's, it's her. It was so, it was so MJ. It was just a little bit arrogant, a little bit cocky, but I'm gonna back it up when I step back on court because you know I am, I'm MJ, like, come on now. Yep. I mean, to add to that moment as well, he came back wearing his original favorite number, 45, which if I'm not mistaken, his older brother also wore 44. He wanted 45 because his older brother wore it, but because his older brother was elder, you know what it is, he got respect to elders in the game, so he had to take that number, he claimed it for himself, and MJ thought, I'm gonna just half the number, 22.5, therefore 23. We're here now. But he came back wearing the 4-5, and some games later, some months later, came back debuting one of the most iconic shoes in the game, the Air Jordan 11. Mad thing. My favorite shoe, my favorite Jordan, I'm gonna throw out there. My favorite crepe, and it only makes sense because it is one of the most iconic, with the patterned leather, that Concord colorway as well, which is actually also a band from the NBA, which eventually was turned around. It's just what he does in the biggest of ways. Ah. Oh. It's a moment, I'm back. Come on. Only Michael Jordan. Only. Now, we're finally at that number one spot, okay? And this comes in at episode five, with probably the decision that could have changed everything. Yeah? Very much That logo fun. that we have on our chest, all those logos on, on those shoes behind Timmy, all thanks to Dolores Jordan. Shout okay, in episode you. five, we find out that Michael Jordan, in his early NBA career, was actually an Adidas fan. Big free He was dead set on signing with Adidas. And Dolores Jordan said to, to, said to Jordan, son, all I want you to do is go and listen to the good people over at Nike. 
I know you don't want to sign with them. Just listen to what they have to say. Yeah. And if she didn't utter those words, Michael Jordan would have signed that three stripes dotted line. And who knows what would have happened? It'd have been a different who game. Knows? Right? It'd have been who a, knows a if your game. kicks would be here today if Dolores Jordan didn't sit Michael Jordan down. He just might not have banged us on. Bam. You know, it was even a bit more than that. She was onto him. He wasn't having a bar of it. He said, look, mum, allow it. I'm going to the three strikes, bro. You know, I've been talking about this since I was a youth. And she's like, you know what? I tried this off the throat. If you don't come to Nike, it's over for you. Because that's just what mum's do. Mum knows best. He signed mom to Nike. Mum knows best. Mom and knows I don't know best. And I don't know if, if most people knew that. I didn't know that. And it shocked me. Yeah. Okay. It was, it was mind blowing. In fact, that it's all thanks to Dolores Jordan. Insane. Yeah. Even now that I speak about it, it's crazy to say it out loud. You know, madness. It's Absolute incredible. madness. And what's even madder is that the most popular brand at the time was Converse. Yeah. And he wasn't even a Converse fan. Yeah. He was going to sign with the enemy. Nike's enemy, not my enemy. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's just, yeah, no, it's, it's, just, nice. it's just crazy to, to, to fast forward to the future and see how he's built this this empire, this the, one of the most iconic brands of all time. Recognized it's all thanks to the Lord's Jordan. And it's, it, it was almost a match made in heaven, right? Because he was already kind of a whole Be Like Mike brand. A fun, a fun in, or say a fun fact, but it's just more an incredible fact. They had put him on a plan, right? If we sign you, we're going to give you a bank. I think it was a quarter of a mil to sign him, right? Yeah. Uh, and the goal is to make three million profit or turnover in your first four years in this contract. Yeah. Like, cool. I think I can do that. I'm MJ. Everything his agent thought he could do. It. Everyone thought he could do it. Bro, in the first year, they flipped 126 mil of Jordan merch. Does that? Add, it doesn't add up. How did you even have enough merch to even fulfill orders? Because you only said three million four, and then you said, "How?" That's why it's top one. That's why it's in the number one spot right now. It has to be. It has to be. And that is everything from us. Make sure you like this video if you like this video, and of course, don't forget to comment down below. What were your favorite moments of the Last Dance documentary? There were so many moments that we didn't mention. There was a few. Steve Kerr got banged in the face. Found the food uh, game, food poisoning game now. My bad, food poisoning game. Food poisoning game. Uh, the Michael Jordan rules book. Oh, that was a mad one. That one was cheeky. That was mad. Do you know what I'm saying? That, that one was very yeah. mad. Let us know in the comment section what your favorite moment was. And of course, subscribe to the YouTube channel and hit that bell to stay notified every time we drop a new video. Now that is everything from us. And that was our top five last dance documentary moments. This is Pure Kicks. Let's, Let's get, get it. it.